Sleepovers just aren't what they used to be. A house full of screens, basically no hiccups. You guys have no idea how good you've got it. Get internet on the Xfinity 10G network for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Back in my day, it was scary stories and flashlights. We don't get here. Oh, really? Mom can see your search history. That's what I thought. Introducing the next generation 10G network, only from Xfinity. Dion Closer with Preps KC here in the Preps KC studio, powered by Xfinity Internet. With speeds faster than a gig, you can power a house full of connected devices all at once. All right, we kick off our Suburban Gold Virtual Media Day. We start alphabetically. We start with Blue Springs. Coach Jed Paulson, entering your second year. And I know there was a lot of change last year, and, and we talked last year about culture change and things like that. And um, how did that go, and how fun was your first full off season as the head coach as you guys really tried to take big steps forward? Yeah, you know, uh, coming in as a new guy, um, but I, I had been here, I kind of had a firm grasp on the culture and knew it needed to change a little bit. Um, having the entire year of an offseason has been fantastic. Uh, guys have really hit the weight room hard. The commitment level has been up. Um, their their um, value in what we're doing has, has risen as well. And you were seeing a lot of gains in the weight room, and that, that obviously that'll transfer to to Friday nights and on games. And it's been fantastic, and the guys have been working really hard. Staff's been working really hard. Uh, our administration works really hard for us. Everybody involved is is really into what we're doing and the product we're trying to put together because we're trying to do it the right way. Um, and our, our, everybody's behind us, so it's been it's been great. Well, and, and you know the, the school district Blue Springs, you know, made two changes last year at both schools, and you yep. and you really see what the district itself as a district level does to support you guys. And that's gotta be great. Uh, tell me this. I know you only got three starters back on offense. So you looks like you're going to be maybe a little young there. I know you had <laughs> some younger classes that are probably hitting that sophomore junior level. Are there some young guys who are really ready to step in and make an impact on offense? Yeah. I mean, we, we, we've had a bunch of, of, of turnover. Um, our upperclassmen, you know, have, have kind of turned it over. And so now it's, it's a lot of spots open, open to get, and these guys have been hungry. Like I said, they've been getting after it. We've had a lot of battles at a lot of positions throughout the summer. And to be honest, quite honest with you, still having those battles <laughs> going into camp. Um, there's still, there's still plenty of positions up for battle. And I think that's the best way to get the most out of kids um, is, to, is to have them go out there and compete all the time. But yeah, um, you know, our sophomore class coming up from freshman last year, we got some guys compete for spots um we got some guys competing as juniors and, and some guys even competing to get on the field as seniors so it's it's been a fantastic uh, mix of uh you know the turnover the guys who left and now we're trying to trying to create some new stuff and by the way you're talking about offense we only have three starters we also changed offensive coordinators um so adam pummel comes in from uh blue valley over there at, at the at, uh, in the Kansas side. Um, and we're trying to, again, we're finding our identity every day. Um, and I think we've kind of narrowed it down after having a summer together, what we really want to be and what we want to look like. And now the kids can really hone in on what exactly we're doing and how to attack things. So it's, it's been an entire learning process, let me tell you, um, <laughs> offensively, but it's been fun and it's been exciting. Our kids are really jumping into it uh, full throttle. What do you like on the defensive side? I think our defense is outstanding right now. Um, our defense is flying around. Uh, they're they're flying to the ball. We've kind of went out and simplified some things. We went out, you know, Coach Terry, uh, our our defensive coordinator, is a longtime Blue Springs guy. Spent some time up at Iowa with with the Hawkeyes and has a great football mind. Um, he's fantastic. We went out and met with some people um, this summer to kind of simplify what we're doing, but still be able to get downhill and attack the attack the ball. And it's been outstanding. Our guys have have, have just gravitated toward what we're doing and uh I, I i'm looking for our defense to be much much improved and what they've shown this summer they're already tremendously improved what's do you see a little, little bit more confidence out of the kids having gone through that whole year instead of having you know a change again after two years yeah. and i'm just kind of knowing that there's a there's a you know a little more stability yeah, and I, yes, for sure. But I think to me, the confidence comes from the work you put in in the offseason. And just like we talked about earlier with with 
um, the commitment level and these guys being in the weight room and, and not, you know, building the culture through the weight room is what we've done. And just those guys seeing the gains and what they can do. Um, and it's all between their ears, you know, it's all, everything's between their ears and seeing those gains and, and now starting to believe in it and seeing what, what can actually happen. So yes, the consistency is one thing, but I think the off season um, being a part of that was a huge deal um, and, and kind of changing the focus of, of, of our program. Well, coach, it should be a fantastic season. Good luck. And we appreciate you taking time with us. Thank you. I appreciate it. Dion Closo with Preps KC, and we are here in the Preps KC studios, powered by Xfinity Internet, the fastest internet with multi-gig speeds to the most homes. And joining us now on our virtual media day for this Bourbon Gold Conference is Alan Wilmus from Blue Spring South. And coach, you know, this time last year, you, you, you had a, you know, a little bit of an off season this summer with the guys that are, you know, coming off a tough year, not winning a game. You're, you're about two weeks away from Lee Summit. You probably don't know exactly what, you know, you think you know what you have, but you don't. That game right there, the first week of the season, you get up big on Lee Summit and then they start making a comeback. You win that game and it kind of springboards you the rest of the way. How important was closing out that game last year to everything that followed after it? Uh, it was really important, you know, and, and we knew this season last year was going to be exciting ups and downs and never knew what we were going to get. You know, we were kind of like a circus out there, but <laughs> we just asked the kids to play hard every play and, and to adjust. And we had to adjust as coaches and, you know, they had to learn, you know, they had to learn that we were up 24 nothing. I think it half over a really talented Lee Summit team and, I knew they were going to come back. I mean, they just had too much firepower on offense with the quarterback and receivers and running backs. So, and they did, you know, coach Thomas does a great job over there. And um, luckily our kids rallied and they kept playing hard and we ended up winning that game. And it was a very good springboard for us because, you know, preaching all this stuff all summer and even the off season week when we could be there, um, you know, it, it really helped pay dividends for the kids. And, and, and the season was like that where we had, when we were down, some games, you know, Park Hill down by 18, seven minutes left, and we won, you know. I mean, that doesn't happen very often, but that's, hats off to our kids. And they kept playing and listening and coaching and had a couple other games like that. So um, it was a great season, but we're really excited about this new group. Well, you did graduate a good group of seniors, um, led by your quarterback. He was a really good guy for you. But uh, you and I have talked in the offseason. You like this group you got coming up, don't you? Yeah, there's a lot of talented guys. I mean, our, our lower levels won last year where they won a lot of games. Uh, as a program, um, and, and, they're, and they're hungry. They kind of got a chip on their shoulder, too, um, which is what I really like. They had, that's kind of the difference between this class and last year's class of seniors and, and what we have coming up is these guys want to get after it. You know, they want to prove something, and, and you can't buy that sometimes, which is awesome for us as coaches to have. Uh, is there any group that's taken big step forward for you uh, during the offseason, whether position group or side of the ball? Sure. I mean, our offense has looked really good. I mean, right now we have a three quarterback battle going on, which is crazy. I've never had that. We have three good um, quarterbacks competing right now. And it's a senior, a junior, and a sophomore. And they're doing a great job. And pretty soon we'll have to kind of pick the guy. It's going to be a hard decision, but we've been grading them all summer. Our o lines really come together. We're really excited about them. They play really hard and play together. And our running backs, we have uh, two really good running backs right now that are young, a junior and a uh, sophomore. Um, KJ Hawkins and uh, um, Darius Morgan, and they've really shown some flashes. So um, our receiving group looks really good. So right now our offense looks really good, and, and we're excited about our linebackers on defense. Uh, we have three solid guys that can run around and hit people. And we're just excited about this group. As you as you go into year two, um, what has been the one of the nicest things for you and your staff to have that full year in the building? I mean, just to be able to do that. Oh, it's been big, just mainly in the weight room. You know, they're, they're getting a full year in the weight room with our head strength coach, Coach Higgins, does a great job, and the rest of our coaches. So having that kind of full year in the weight room has paid dividends, um, just in, you know, strength, um, injury resilience, speed, all that stuff, explosiveness, but also just discipline, too, of being in the weight room and doing things the right way. Um, so I'm real excited to see, and it's been awesome already this summer, seeing how our kids have transformed only in a year um, based on us being there. Culture-wise, uh, you know, uh, as someone who lives in Blue Springs, I think the fans in this town on both sides of 40 Highway got a little spoiled for the last few decades and expecting yeah. the football just to be good. 
And even when they were good, I, I don't know if the crowds were as big as they were on both sides of the 40, 40 highway. And you had huge crowds last year, student body really engaged. Um, fall sports did a, a great job last year uh, at, at Blue Spring South. Of course, you'll talk about the softball program, which is the best in the state. What What is the community like, especially when a football team's winning? Oh, it's been awesome. You know, we moved down here. My family did like right before or right after I accepted the job when school was out. And, um, you know, just us having that success, and people care about football around here. I mean, nothing against any other place I've been, but, um, you know, people do, I mean, care about football a lot. And, and a lot of it has to do with the tradition, obviously, all the success. And, you know, I think they're hungry to see success again. And um, us having some, um, a good season last year uh, really helped out. And, you know, I know there was a lot of noise, a lot of people talking and getting excited in the community. And obviously it showed on Friday nights, you know, great crowds. And not only that, a lot of people have reached out to me, email or text or phone call, just past Jaguars or past anybody that lives in the community, just uh, really appreciative of what we're doing, which is awesome to hear. We got Lee Summit again in week one. <laughs> so yeah. you expected a similar type deal. <laughs> you know, you're going to get a good talented, well-coached team. Yeah. I mean, all, all to Coach Thomas did was, you know, put a first round DN in the in the NFL this year. Yeah, so, uh, you, you, talent, assume you, yeah you assume you expect you to see the same thing? Uh, yeah, I think it'll be a good game. You know, they're tough. They're always well coached. And, you know, Coach Thomas does a good, good job schematically and just with getting his guys in good positions to make plays. And um, they lost a, a good group last year, but, you know, they always have. <laughs> Deion Clisso with Preps KC as we continue our virtual media days. We're here live in the Preps KC studio, powered by Xfinity Internet, now with up to five to ten times faster upload speeds. And we're joined by Lisa West, Coach Willie Horn. And, and Coach, uh, the second season, especially as a, a new head coach, uh, has to feel a little more comfortable in the first um, as if you got a full year under your belt. you got a full off season in the building, all that great stuff that, that goes on. And um, I know you guys finished strong at the end of the year. Uh, you go down, you beat Springfield Kickapoo. You play Lee Summit North to, to a two-score game. I played a tough game there. What did you like at what you saw to your kids at the end of last season that they've carried through this offseason this summer? I think the biggest thing was uh, our resiliency um, at the end of the year, um, being able to play our best games going into the end of the year and kind of that, like you said, going down to kick, Kickapoo and being able to get that win uh, kind of, Jump started us into our off season, um, and our we've got a really strong group of senior leaders um, that have kind of used that as their mantra throughout this off season. You know, just seeing where where we were able to compete and push at the end of the year, and wanting that to be the way that we start the year, and then continue to progress and build um, to where we're playing our best games again by the end of the season. How much uh, more? I don't want to say fun, but more relaxing, I guess, is the. To, to have the kids know what you expect out of them as a head coach and and with your staff and and to, you know go through this off season and summer with not just learning to, you know learning names <laughs> and who, mm -hmm. who kids oh, yeah. are and just, and just having that mm -hmm. having that out of the way. <laughs> yeah, no this this summer this off season was uh was completely different. Um, you know now having having a year under my belt, them understanding what it is that are the expectations of us as a coaching staff, um, you know, being able to do some more um, team bonding, team building type things, um, having our senior uh, camping trip that we went on float trip um, to, to kind of reinstill and get refocused of where we want to go goals that we have for the year, um, which we weren't able to do last year because I just didn't have that bead on, on the team quite yet. Um, but now again, having, having a lot of those things already in place, gave us an opportunity to get moving with those things throughout this offseason. So really excited about that. You bring a lot of starters back on both sides of the ball. Um, what, is there one side of the ball or one position group that's really uh, taking a big step forward or, or you're really excited about heading into the season? Well, from the offensive standpoint, um, really excited because – you know, we we brought in brought in a new offense. Um, so anytime you bring in a new offense, there's always going to be that learning curve. Um, and again, we saw better um, progress as we got to the end. But being a year into it, being able to add some tweaks and things to it, um, have really 
taking us up another step um, throughout this summer. So really excited about the steps that we've taken uh, going through through this summer with the offensive side and then our defense, returning a lot of guys on that side, which I felt like we were a pretty solid defense uh, last year. We just, we didn't do well in the turnover um, side of things and getting off the field on third down. Um, so that's really been a point of emphasis for us throughout this off season, um, but really excited about what, what we were able to do, we went up to Northwest last two weeks ago um, before dead week and competed up there and we competed pretty highly. Um, so really excited about the direction in which we're going. Well, when you're in the, the gold and you, and you play this, uh, you know, the silver teams as well, uh, and the football's so tough here in Kansas City, you know that you've been around it your entire mm -hmm. career. Uh, yeah. Is that really kind of take away that you, you can't get caught looking ahead on anybody? I mean, it's, it's for a team that's playing in your conference, in class six, you just got to focus on Friday and that's it. And you can't worry about anything else. Absolutely. Uh, you, you cannot, there's, there's no cupcakes. There's no, <laughs> you know, okay, let's get to this game and we'll be all right. Um, every game you've got to go in, you know, with the right mindset and prepared to play your best game, you know, cause at any night, any given time you can get beat because of the coaching coaches that are in this conference and, you know, in Missouri in general, um, and the talent that we play each each night, you know, so you've got to be ready to go out there and put your best foot forward every Friday. I can remember, and this has been a few years ago under, you know, when there was only three uh, leagues or four leagues and Greg Oder used to tell me, he goes, oh yeah, my, my uh, bye week out of the conference is Staley. <laughs> he goes, he goes so there's, there's no weeks to, to get healthy. No, <laughs> you know, not he's, at all. He's staring across at Fred Bouchard and that crew that's winning state championships. So yeah, no, it, it, it makes it good. My question now is, you know, one of the things I think that is the biggest thing for teams in Kansas City in Class 6 is staying healthy and having depth. How are your numbers and how are you able to build on that depth in the offseason? Uh, well, our numbers are around 170 to 180 um, right now, which is an uptick in where we were last year by about 15 to 20 kids. Um, my biggest thing was obviously getting out, get, being at the school and trying to get some of those other athletes, the basketball, the baseball, the track kids that, that weren't playing last year to come out, which we got a few of those kids to come out and, uh, you know, at least give it a shot. Um, so hope, hoping that that pans out for those kids because they, they look the part for, for some <laughs> of them. Um, so it's just, it's just putting it all together. Um, but just, just excited to, to continue the growth. You know, I, I know a lot of it starts at our youth, uh, youth level. Um, but right now, my first thing was attacking our own hallways and getting some of those kids that were either on the fence or, you know, took a year off um, to come back out and, and give it another shot. Well, coach, it should be a fantastic season. Good luck. And we appreciate you taking time with us. I appreciate you, Dion. You have a great day. Dion Closo with Preps KC. We're here in the Preps KC studio, powered by Xfinity Internet, the fastest internet with multi-gig speeds to the most homes. And we're joined by Liberty North coach Andy Lehrman. And coach, uh, I know that, uh, you know, the last few years it hasn't ended the way you wanted, a uh, state championship game and then a, uh, a semifinal game. That being said, those are good achievements. Uh, you guys have won a lot of football games and, and you're one of the powers in the state of Missouri. How, how has your team reacted? Uh, coming off that semifinal loss to CBC, and how's your offseason been? Yeah, so I mean, obviously we were disappointed, you know, last year is uh, in the moment. Um, as you reflect back on it and realize, like you said, uh, what a great year you had. Uh, you know, we had a great group of seniors. We graduated thirty six seniors last year, and so we had a huge group of kids that had poured a lot into our program and uh, had made three straight semifinal games uh, over the course of their career. So they definitely left an imprint uh, on our program and. And we're sad to see him go. We're disappointed in how that ended. But but with that said, we're super excited about the group that's uh, that's stepping in this year's uh, a senior class and, and the group and, and team that we have. Uh, they've had an incredible offseason, worked super hard, just like they always do. You know, we tried to try to create a lot of adversity in the offseason, uh, try to make things hard. And we and we do a lot of work and we kind of pride ourselves on on going back to work and, and hitting the weight room and, and doing tough things in the offseason. And and this group's been no different than the, than the past, Dion. I mean, these guys really kind of uh, wash, rinse, repeat, so to speak. We kind of just hop in and do it again. And, um, you know, over the years, whether, you know, was when coach was here, when I've, I've taken over, we just kind of 
that we do what we do, and uh, we're going to continue to do that and try to uphold the standard of, of each and every group that's came before them. So uh, excited about this group and what they've done. Well, one of the the, the hallmarks of Coach Jones and, and what you've done together is that you you tend to graduate 36 seniors, but there's sometimes, and at Kearney, that's, I mean, as a smaller school, he did that. There's usually 35 or 40 right behind him ready to go. Um, what what does that say about your program that that kids aren't peeling off? They're staying yeah. with it and 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 waiting their turn and and are ready to step in for their senior year or junior year or sophomore year. They're they're really staying with the program. Yeah, I just think it speaks a lot about um, not only our our team but our coaching staff. I think we've got an incredible coaching staff that connects really well with our kids. We do a really good job of of coaching all kids at all levels. We try to try to organize our practice. You know, we've got. 10 through 12 this year, we've got 130 kids out for football right now. And so uh, numbers aren't a problem. Kids are excited about football here. Um, and, and we're obviously super excited about having a part of it. And and then with that said, I mean, you have big numbers in your senior class and junior class, sophomore, I mean, that senior class, there's some kids that just end up being a part of the program uh, and being great kids that are a part of it, maybe playing special teams or run a scout team. But again, I think we try to do a good job of incorporating those kids into our program and making sure they understand that they're a part of what's going on. Um, and just being a part of something special that's like like everybody always says, bigger than yourself, all those kind of things. But, um, you know, we, we just have a pretty special thing going here at North, whether it's football or or volleyball or baseball or fill in the blank. We just feel like we've got got a really good culture here at North. And so kids like being a part of things. And we, we do a good job of uh, coaching all kids and trying to just get to know them a little bit and, and make them a part of what's going on. Offensively, uh, you lose a quarterback. Um, you lose some good players on that side. Uh, what have you seen out of that group this summer? Yeah, so the offensive group's pretty pretty talented. We're excited. I think it's probably one of the more talented groups that I've ever had a, been a part of on a on a team uh, coaching wise. And so, you know, we lost Sam. Sam had a great career. He's off at Washburn now, but uh, a young man, uh, Tillman Martin, is going to step in a quarterback, six four, one ninety kid who was a backup last year, weighed about a buck a buck sixty last year. So he's <laughs> put on some weight and really bought in the weight room and done a good job. And uh, he's got a tremendous arm, and we're super excited him uh, to have him in there taking over at, at a quarterback and. Uh, you know, he's going to have some weapons to, to get the ball to. Um, we've got some really talented kids, uh, starting with Keelan Smith, uh, Jay Sean Ross. Uh, we got a tight end kid named Tyler Supas that's going to step in this year. That's done a really nice job. Um, we've got a Micah Joe Barnett coming back off of injury, mm-hmm. in, excuse me, injury. He's going to have a, a great year. He's doing doing well and he's cleared. And so we're excited to get him back out there. Uh, we've got a young man named Ja'Cory Love who's who's come in and done a nice job for us. And so um, you tag that with a, probably our biggest offensive line that we've had since we've been here, uh, we've got a couple tackles that are 6'5", uh, a couple offensive guards that are 6'3", and then a center that's about 6'1", uh, and, and all are pretty pretty good-sized boys. So we're super <laughs> excited uh, about that group coming in. And so that that offensive group, um, I expect them to have a, have a big year and do some really good things. There's some experience on that side of the ball and um, some things that we're going to be able to do that we haven't been able to do in the past. That's a D1 offensive line size-wise. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. Um, you know, we we've got. I mean, both tackles are six six five, two sixty, two seventy, two eighty, somewhere in there, and both guards are six three, two seventy, and then that center is about six one, six two, two twenty five, something like that, two forty or two. Excuse me, two twenty five, two thirty, and uh, so a lot of experience on that group. Um, you know, we got we got Modi Williams in there, who was a heavyweight state championship wrestler, and then uh, Braden Gifford, who started at left tackle for 13 games last year. So, got some experience in there and some and some really good talent. So, we're excited about the group. Well, defensively, we everyone knows about Melvin, <laughs> that middle linebacker. Yep. Uh, but what do you what do you bring back around him? Yeah, it seems like Melvin's been around for six, seven years. Um, well, he looks like he's 25, so that's yeah, that yeah. helps. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's leaned up. He's looking good, moving around really well, so we're excited about the year he's going to have. But uh, the kid that nobody really ever talks a whole lot about is the big nose guard that sits in front of him, uh, Darius Pamami, uh, 6'2", 300-pound nose guard who started for – this will be his fourth year as well. He started as a freshman right in front of Melvin. So Melvin gets a lot of the credit, but uh, Darius eats up a lot of the blocks in front of him. So, you know, he's going to anchor our defensive line. You know, our, our DNs graduated, all four of them, uh, all playing college football. And so uh, we're going to have some guys step in there. Um, Jay Sean's going to play both sides of the ball a little bit. So he's going to play a little DN as well. Um, we got a kid named Jordan Ivy who's going to step in and do a good job there too. And a couple other guys are going to battle for those spots. Um, you know, we bring back Trey Snyder, uh, who played our, our middle safety position. Uh, Trey's a big baseball kid. 
Uh, I think he's the number one shortstop in the in the in the uh, state of Missouri for sure. He's going to Tennessee, and so excited to have him back. He just kind of brings a calmness to that back end. Uh, Cole Youngs, and also, also excuse me, also a returner uh, in the secondary. So we're excited about having that guy back. He's a great tackler, does a good job coverage wise for us. And then a kid named Ryan Hudson, who's uh, who started the last three games of our cha state championship year uh, two seasons ago as a freshman. Uh, we had an injury, and he stepped in as the he was our next guy, and so he had some experience and started all 13 games there as well. So we've got some uh, some pieces back there that are going to be a big part of what we do, but then we're going to have some new faces on that defense. And so, you know, obviously we had a tremendous defense last year, uh, one of the better ones around, obviously, did a great job of, of doing what we did as far as uh, what we expect. And so we're going to have to kind of plug some new guys in, but we feel like we do a good job, again, of developing kids and getting them ready to go. And, and we're going to plug those guys in, and we're not going to lower the standard on what we do uh, at all whatsoever. Well, you look at your league first, the Suburban Gold, and, uh, you know, Blue Springs South bounces back out. You know, Coach Wilmos goes down there and does a great job. Coach Paulson does a great job at Blue Springs. Coach, he had three first-year coaches or yeah. new coaches last year, and Wilmos wasn't the first-year coach. But uh, those three programs, at least on the West with Coach Horn, all started to show good results. So, you know, you got to grind there. At least it's not seven teams like it has been in the past. It's just the five of you. But then you look at the, the expanded Class 6 that's coming this year, um, and, and that's going to bring – uh, maybe some teams up as well. Kansas City's is pretty deep in Class Six, and it's going to be a grind, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. There's no doubt about it. It's not going to be any different than any year. I mean, <laughs> we've, got all, we've got all those teams in in our conference that we're playing that that are uh, like you said. You know, Coach Wilmot's doing a great job at Blue Spring South, and there's no doubt that the the momentum that they started last year, he's just going to build on. Um, those guys do a great job, and then you know, at least Summit West, like you said, Blue Springs. You're filling the blank. I mean, these guys are all going to get their programs up and rolling just like just like we expect them to do and so we're going to have to be ready each and every week you know we open week one with with the <laughs> East Summit North Broncos and they're going to be really really good as well and so you know there's really no off weeks like I feel like we talk about this each and every year right I mean <laughs> the suburban conference is just really good and so we're going to have to be ready to go and, and focus on what we control and how we how we come out and play each and every game and you know if every year's a new year we've been talking to our guys about this the last couple of years I mean We've had a lot of success and, and done a lot of great things the last several years, but none of that really matters this year. And so our guys are going to come out and improve what kind of team they are this year. And, and we're going to get tested right out the gate and f every week following after that. Well, Coach, should be a fantastic season. Good luck, and we appreciate you taking time with us. Thank you, Dion. Good to, good to visit with you again. Dion Cluso with Preps KC as we continue through our virtual media days. We're here in the Preps KC studio, powered by Xfinity Internet. Supercharge your home with supersonic Wi-Fi for an ultra-fast and incredibly powerful connection. And joining us now from Raymore Petito High School is Coach Sean Martin. Uh, Coach, another good season for you all. I know it did uh, end the way you wanted to. You fell to Knicks in the playoffs. Uh, graduated a lot of good players, uh, including quarterback uh, Zach Dombrowski. And, uh, but you guys have really done a good job of just – kind of finding that depth and, and keeping that going. How has your offseason been with these new guys that are stepping into these big roles? Uh, our, we feel really good about our offseason, what the kids have done, the work they've put in. Uh, you know, one thing about it right now, football is really popular at Ray Peck, and we, we've got a lot of kids to, to work with, getting them out. Uh, you know, they've got an opportunity to come out, show us what they can do. And, you know, we, we feel like we're on the right path. Offensively, like I said, you, you lose your quarterback, you lose outstanding receiver as well, uh, but you got a really good uh, Jaden Riddell uh, tight end slash receiver uh, back. I know you've got a good sophomore running back. How do you feel like the offensive line and, and some of those pieces are coming together? Yeah, a actually, you know, the offensive line is uh, really should be a strength of our team this year. We have, you know, four of the kids coming back that started a year ago, and we got a couple more that we feel – really good about and what they can do and uh you know it, it's nice to have really good players but uh you know the experience is such a big deal at our level returning experience and, and we do have a lot of experience coming back on our offensive line defensively what do you feel about that side of the ball at defense uh you know we we uh we should be improved we have a lot of experience returning on defense we played some 
young kids a year ago that uh, had not had a lot of varsity snaps. They didn't have that experience a year ago. And we feel like, you know, they're, they're not only a year older, but we feel like they're a year better. You talk about, you know, the, the football is popular in the right Is Do you see that as a as a byproduct of a, of a run to the semifinals and then the state championship, that that kind of helps increase your numbers a little bit? When you're going deep into the playoffs, there's a lot of little kids who are probably standing around going, hey, I want to do that. <laughs> yeah, and, and Ray Peck is kind of a unique situation for, you know, especially the suburban gold being the only high school in the, in the community or the two communities you know, and it, it's a big deal for the, the young kids. Uh, had a youth camp a few weeks ago, had a tremendous turnout. I know the uh, youth leagues, kids are all excited. And, and so with our community, of, you know, the two towns of Raymore and Pecure, it's a, it's a neat deal to be a, a one school town. Well, that's what's kind of funny. You're kind of like two towns in one school where everybody else is <laughs> yeah. one town and two or three schools. It yeah. definitely is. One thing, and, and I want to highlight, uh, is that you guys hosted the uh, Greater Kansas City Football Coach Association, BUnion.com, All-Star Game uh, this summer. And that's another thing that uh, brought a lot of other coaches and other uh, players from other teams down to your area. And, and it was a great event. You guys did a fantastic job. Uh, what's that say about your community, about how they turned out for that? Yeah, I was so happy with that night and the way it turned out. Uh, great community support, uh, you know, in the Kansas City football community. Great support that night. It was a, a, a fantastic night for all the kids involved, the schools, uh, and, and the town. So, yeah, that was a, a, a great night for the Raymore Pecure community and the, the football community. I know you've been a part of this program for a long time, and and and, and we know that the, you know, the state championships back in the 2000s and when you were in Class 5, and now you're in Class 6, and you've won one there. Um, how, how great is it to be a part of a, a football community in a town that uh, it continues just every year, uh, play good football and, and, and be community oriented. And um, just one of the kind of the, the bedrock teams now in 6A in, in, in Missouri. Yeah, it, it's a it's a special deal. Like you said, I've been around it a long time here. Uh, and, and, you know, speaking of, you know, one school, two towns, uh, the school is kind of the glue that holds it all together. And, you know, the, those kids – uh, out there on the teams, the football teams, wrestling teams, basketball, whatever it might be, all the activities really, uh, you know, they're they're really showing off what goes on in the school. And, uh, you know, I, I know the people of our community, they're very proud of their school and the, the teams and the programs that we have out here. Well, Coach, it should be a fantastic season. Good luck, and we appreciate you taking time with us. Thank you, Dion.